Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the Infinite Pass Log. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> now, as always, it's me, Ricardo, and... Me, Todd. All right. And like we said, we're going to be talking about Blood Dragon. Now, um, this was my first introduction to Far Cry 3. Uh, how about you, Todd? The, yeah, this my first introduction to Far Cry 3 as well, to be fair. Um, obviously, even for both of us, you know, we're actually too young to understand a lot of it to a certain degree. Um, but no, amazing game, great references, great just inspiration. Like, it's just addictive. Yeah. Um, like I said before we started, um, you could definitely tell the developers were having fun with this game. A lot of people saw this and were just weirded out, I guess, a little bit because they didn't understand it at all. Like, why would you make Far Cry 3, which was a relative success, uh, 80s neon-filled game with the RoboCop gun and, like, just a whole bunch of one-liners and catchphrases out of, like, it's out of time, it's essentially, you know? And also with the Far Cry name. Yeah, and that with was the, Far the weirdest Cry name. thing that people didn't understand. Why? Why would, did they do it? Like, it still seems crazy now that Ubisoft would back it. It's crazy, but you know what? I love it. Um, it all this, all, everything about this game, aesthetically, I love. I love the look. I love the the eighties. The everything is unnecessarily like neon colored, neon blue, reds. It's just. All the 80s stuff. I love the fucking RoboCop gun. The yeah. RoboCop gun feels like RoboCop's gun. It's, yeah. just, it's just RoboCop's gun. I love that. I've always loved RoboCop. As a kid, I loved his weapon. I loved the Beretta. And this game gave me that. And uh, I use that weapon almost exclusively through my playthrough of the game. I use that in the bow. See, I didn't use it other than when they made me use it. Because for me, I'm not a fan of like burst fire pistols. Like, I'd rather have single shot than burst fire. Um, it's RoboCop's gun. I just, it I blows know. holes and things, dude. I know. <laughs> it's yeah, but still, it's like I don't know. But like, just the character himself, like, what was it, Rex? Rex Colt. I don't remember. I think it's it was, I think it's Rex Colt. We're talking about. It, we don't even have a clue what we're on about. But yeah, like. It's obviously inspiration of Terminator and Duke Nukem. A little like, bit of Rambo thrown in there as well. Yeah, exactly. Duke Nukem is probably, yeah, probably not the best thing to reference him to, but he is like Duke Nukem. Like, that's what all the one-liner kind of things are. It's some people obviously a little bit younger. That's the reference to go by. And just, I don't know, there's just so many good things to say about this game. Yeah, I don't uh, even know where to start. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the developers went with a direction for uh, not retro cutscenes, but like pixel art cutscenes, um, which is weird because Far Cry 3, for the most part, was done through like your first person. And, uh, it was greatly acted, Far Cry 3. Um, it, it was weird to see that this game went in a direction where it was just doing cutscenes sort of, sort of Ninja Gaiden-esque, like on the NES. Yeah, they made up that sort of pixelated um, sort of stills, but with like mo motion, like like a flick book kind of style, if you will. Yeah, with um, a voiceover. Exactly. Um, but Which... yeah, that that is the main inspiration for those cutscenes is Ninja Gaiden games. Like that is yeah. the main inspiration for that. And I w I think at first I was kind of put off by it because it was hard to follow. Like you were like, what the hell's going on? I've just flown in a chopper, absolutely. Blowing the shit out of this base, and then all of a sudden I'm watching a cutscene, which is in probably about 16 bit. Hard to tell what the hell's going on. Yeah. With some like Rex Power Cult voice acting over the top, you're like, whoa. Yeah, it is very off-putting, especially after that like uh, cutscene, which I believe, uh, like that opening scene where you're in the chopper and you're using the minigun, I believe that's a reference to Predator. Where they were playing that song, I don't remember. Somebody will correct me on that one, but um, that's another reference. They have tons of like '80s movie references. It, that's not only visual; it's auditory. It's just it's crazy. The guys again were having a lot of fun with this game. You can definitely see it. Yeah, there's um, so many references that you probably won't even notice most of them. 
Yeah. Um, if I can just sort of go back to the like the, the weapons, like obviously we were talking about the Robocop gun. Um, mm, it's and the best weapon. That no, it's not. It is. <laughs> um, obviously, you've got the Robocop gun, you've got the bow, you've got a shotgun, you've got a sniper rifle, flamethrower, and the assault rifle. That's the one. Yeah. Like, you have... I personally think it's quite a, a like a small amount of weapons, but then the thing to remember is that it is also just a standalone DLC. Yeah. So you're not going to have a full game's worth. Um, yeah. The thing um, that that's true. Would have been better for me though is if every weapon was upgradable. So of course you unlock your upgrades by taking over bases, and then you get specific missions, which then you have to go do that mission. It will tell you to use a specific weapon to do a specific thing, like use the you know Robocop Beretta gun to sneak into a base and kill a target. Like it will be different things with different weapons for each objective, and then you get upgrades for certain weapons for doing those missions. But only three weapons had upgrades for them. And that's the shotgun, the sniper rifle, and the the assault, assault rifle. Work. Yeah, the assault yeah. rifle. So that was kind of disappointing. I think, obviously, if you're going to do an upgrade system, at least try and do it for every weapon to try and give each weapon more depth. Um, Which it's weird because Far Cry Three does have that. Like for every gun, it has some sort of custom. Like you can customize it a little bit and upgrade. Like weapon uh ammo capacity and rate of fire um not every gun has those things but every gun had some variation of some sort of custom ability yeah which is weird that far cry 3 well yes it is a stripped down version of of uh or blood uh, i dragon mean blood dragon down version, yeah <laughs> yeah it's a stripped down version of far cry 3 it is it is weird that they didn't do that yeah um yeah I... but with with it also being a stripped down version of far cry 3 there's also less to do, which, which you can look at it in a good and bad way because while Far Cry Blood Dragon was fun and short, uh, I, I don't know how long it took you to complete it, but it took me like almost, it, with everything being done, about 10 hours to be. Yeah, which is still quite long considering, but yeah, the story literally yeah. would take about three to four hours. Like it's really not a lot because even in the main story, you would only need to take about four bases or five bases. Yeah. It's very, very minimal. Um, yeah. Like that, that that's the only disappointing thing. Is, is there's not a lot to do in the world. There's only about what eight or nine animals to kill. Yeah, there's, it's very small. Yeah, there's about twenty or thirty TV sets. You don't need to hunt them out either. Once you take over a base, it shows you everything in that area. Um, and when yeah. you take certain bases, you can buy maps for those locations. It shows you where all the VHS tape collectibles are and where the um, TVs are as well, um, and also even shows you what animals are in those areas, so you don't need to find where the animals are, you just know what part of the map to go to. You know what was weird too, is that the, for it being an open world game, and usually I don't complain about this, but the game was too big, you know what I mean? The map was too big, and everything was too far away from each other to feel like there was, this world was being filled with something. Yeah, I, I felt as well, if just by doing the story missions... You didn't. You literally only saw probably about half the island. Yeah. Like it was really pointless. Like they could yeah. just built another like an island off of like what Far Cry Three would be. But then it wouldn't be Far Cry Three. Do you know what I mean? But I'm just saying like it just it just wasn't enough. It was all no. spread out. There wasn't a lot to do. And everything just got samey. Yeah, everything then, just that that is sort of. I don't know, the Bane, or... The, it kills the momentum of the game. Yeah. Uh, you, you start playing... Like, you have fun. You definitely... Like, that first opening act, it's great. I love it. But once you get past the point, um, after a couple base missions where you, you have to take over the base and all that kind of stuff, you start to learn that this is pretty much all you're going to be doing. Um, like you said before, you do have the upgrades and everything, but that's all optional. If you just wanted to get through the game, you get the bases, and then you have your main story mission after, like, two or three bases that you take. And that's it. That's the whole game. And that's kind of disappointing in a way, because 
it's a fun game. It has a lot of fun things. It's having fun with itself, and uh, you're just doing like chores. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree that. I think the game is actually more enjoyable if you don't do the extra content. Because it's all the same. All the extra content literally just end up doing the same things. Yeah. And, and even the world nice. is not even fun to traverse. When I went through the no. game, I beat the main story and then I went back and did everything. Like all the extra stuff, all the TVs, all that. And I was just, I wasn't having fun traversing it. Um, I'm going to compare it to Far Cry 3 again because that's what it's based off of. Far Cry 3 has fun traversable environments. It's fun to go through all the, this island and everything. Blood Dragon, it just, it's boring. The thing is, really like, Far is. Cry 3, it does have day-night cycle, doesn't it? It does, yes. Yeah. Whereas Blood Dragon doesn't. It's just constant nighttime Fog. in Blood <laughs> I would Dragon. say it's foggy. Like Yeah, it's just like overcast, foggy dinginess. Yeah, I think, but they have a story reason for that, which I do love. Tin. It's like, it's it's the it's it's post-apocalyptic. The uh, it's cold. It's uh, nuclear winter or something like that. But yeah. you're in the tropics, so yeah, it it's ruins. No I think it ruins it though. Like if you had an actual night and then some kind of day where there's a bit of light breaking through the clouds or something, it would add a whole new depth to the world. It would add a whole new depth, but I don't know how they would handle the colors of the game. Yeah, like that would make it difficult for them. But that I, that is one of the things that ruined it for me and made it sometimes just unbearable to play. Is literally that the whole game you're just driving around in darkness. You are, um, and the enemy types. It, were there enemy types in the game? Because all I remember were the Power Ranger knockoff dudes. Um, I think there was like a heavy type that you fought eventually, right? There was. There was a heavy type and there was a flamethrower guy as well. But the flamethrower guy is really easy because you just shoot the packs on his back mm -hmm. and he blows up and he kills everyone around him. Um, there's heavy troopers which are a bit of a pain in the ass, but a couple of grenades and a few shots to the head and they're fine. Um, in fact, later on, um, you can, when you get upgrades for the sniper rifle, you get explosive rounds. And you can just mm. blow their head up in one go. Like it just start, they went like three or four shots it is, I think. Oh. I um, never... just puts them down. Um, I did that, but I never used the sniper rifle. Like I got I probably got the explosive rounds, but I never really used any oh, other weapons. They're so overpowered. Literally one shoot on a truck. Like sometimes you got like four people hiding behind a van. Just shoot yeah. it, they're all dead. Like it's just so overpowered. Someone's running, don't aim at them, same at the floor near them where they're going, they'll be dead. But like, it's just yeah. ridiculous ridiculously overpowered um but yeah like going back into the story and being short and the world obviously not having much to it the story missions actually give you more to it because one of the missions sort of near the end you actually have to use was it you end up on a hang glider don't you yeah that was fun that was fun i ended up coming off it too soon so i, I went end up going quite low and you go through like the gate sort of area mm -hmm. and then i end up on a um oh what are they they seem to go on the sea with, on the water Docks. with. No, that you not, jet not, ski. Yeah, jet ski. I end up on a jet ski, um, and I think I end up getting out and getting eaten by a shark. <laughs> there were sharks in the game. I don't remember. There was, yeah, there were sharks I... in the game, um, and they had like a neon, like. Oh no, they had lasers, back. right? Yeah, they had lasers on their back. Yeah, because yeah. they were. Uh, that's an Austin Powers reference. I remember playing that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And the evil uh, turtles as well. <laughs> it's so weird because like we're talking about all the negatives but yet yeah. i get so hyped for the game at the same time because it has good shit in it <laughs> like the, there's there's one bit in the game it's not far from the end basically you're after the thing called the kill star and where you're yeah. a cyborg um you can use the kill star and it's like the ultimate weapon kind of thing um and you need it to destroy the, the enemy of the game essentially um boss. yeah and when you have to get the kill start, this is where the game gets really weird. You go into another dimension, which is just odd to begin with. Um, and this is where I almost got put off the game. Basically, you go into this other dimension, you have no weapons or anything, and you have to go through these challenges. Three different challenges, I think it was. The mm. first one, the weapon you get is the Beretta, which is the three burst pistol, which I don't really like anyway. And you just get like completely swarmed by these zombie enemies. You can only kill them with headshots. Nothing else. Yeah. The gun with the most recoil in the whole game 
and you have to kill enemies with headshots only. Fair enough, you're playing on console with a controller and you've got um, aim assist on? Fair enough! Even with PC and mouse where it's reasonably easy anyway, it's still a pain in the ass when they're <laughs> chasing you, you're trying to go upstairs backwards and you're trying to like get a massive horde of them, and then some of them throw fireballs at you and shit, it's just like, oh my god! And they're like ducking and diving and tripping over themselves, and it's just like I don't oh. think I had a problem with that. I... It's it's not a problem. It's just frustrating and annoying yeah, when annoying. You, do, you 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 can only kill them with headshots. Mm -hmm. Like you normally aim for a headshot anyway, but if you hit them in the neck or the chest, it's not so bad. Like they're moving about, but when you can only kill them with headshots, it just gets annoying. And then you go into the next section, and it's shotgun only. And then some the zombies the have shotguns. And some of them throw fire at you, and some of them just swarm you. Try shooting a zombie with a headshot, with a shotgun, with a spray <laughs> that is just unreal. It's just ridiculous. I... Yeah, I think I remember having a problem with that bit more than I did with the Beretta. Yeah, um... that was the worst bit. The shotgun was the worst bit. Like, occasionally you might end up with a massive group, because you had to go close to them anyway to even get a headshot. You could end up with about five or six in front of you at one go, and you could take four of them out with a headshot in one go. You can do it next time and no one dies. They don't even budge. And then you just get cornered and surrounded and you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the mo one of the most annoying bits. But then after that, when you get the kill star, you're congratulated on the best things on planet Earth. A montage. A, a classic 80s montage. <laughs> a classic 80s montage. It's like Rocky inspired montage. It's mm -hmm. so amazing. Yeah, it's all. It's. It goes back to the 80s feel of it, and it definitely gets. It, it puts in references to Rocky. It puts in references to um, Karate Kid, which coincidentally was directed by the same man, Rocky and Karate Kid. Yeah. Um, it's just. Yeah. And it has that. I think that has like the best line for me is like where the guy. Guy has sex with uh, what was the girl lady's name? Something. It was something like Doctor Darling. Was a sex pun, right? I don't know. It was Doctor Darling. Was the Doctor Dar? Oh, okay. Then it isn't a sex pun. Man, I wish it was. Um, <laughs> where he, he she says like, "Do you love me?" And he says, "No, I'm already married to a woman, and that woman is Lady Liberty, and it's yeah. like a graffitied up um, Statue of Liberty." I yeah. love that bit. Um, oh. but after that. The kill, the kill star. You probably have like what one or two bases before you have to get to the end game. Uh, I think so. Yeah, and the kill star is just super overpowered. I don't um, remember using it too often. It uses um, your health to use, but it doesn't use a lot of it. And if you're high enough level as well, you've got so much health, it doesn't matter. Um, and basically, yeah, it's just you just shoot a giant laser beam at your wrist. Um, it's really overpowered. Going through the last sort of base is like quite simple. Because you just use that like repeatedly, and you throw it in minutes. It's actually quite simple, to be fair. Yeah. And then you get the best thing, which would be riding your own dragon. Oh yeah, the blood dragon. To be fair, we haven't mentioned about the blood dragon. Um, no. That's the unique animal to the game. Yeah. It is a, it's a small T Rex that can shoot lasers out of its mouth, I believe. The right. which one? The one you ride, or just a one in general? The regular, the regular blood dragons that you find out in the wild. Yeah, they they fire laser beams. Yeah, which, which, which were pretty fun at first. Uh, you can utilize them um, with hearts that you take off enemies. Um, you throw them into a base. The blood dragon will run in and cause shit to uh, happen, and hopefully he would destroy mostly everybody in the base. Usually he would. Whenever I played. And then he'd have about half his health and you can finish him off quicker. Yeah. It's a neat mechanic at first, but it gets old just like the rest of the game. But uh, back on to the ending cutscene. Um, I don't remember what song was playing. But it was like, it felt very He-Man-esque. Like when they introduced the blood dragon that you'd ride. Yeah. And... Uh, it is kind of disappointing. It's cool and disappointing at the same time. Because it's cool you're riding this awesome beast of a thing. And then at the same time, it's just a turret section. You don't yeah. have control But e even, even he makes um, 80s references too. Does he? Oh yeah, does yeah. he talk? Yeah. 
Yeah, he talks. He, I can't remember the reference, but I remember I was laughing. Uh, I can't remember what it's from either. It's really annoying, mate. Oh my god. I just, I keep remembering things. Usually I play the games before we do the podcast. Um, I thought I remember this game very well, and t I guess I didn't. No, I, I only finished it about two weeks ago. I think it was, something like that. So yeah. I, I, I remember it reasonably well. Um, should have played it more. But yeah, it's so good because like you're there shooting like laser beams off these turrets on his shoulder. No, you're there like shooting machine guns off his shoulder, and he's like, "I can shoot laser beams from my eyes." <laughs> it's like really just monotone. You're like, "Wait, what the fuck?" And then all of a sudden, he just starts firing laser beams. You're like, oh my god! Yeah, that whole that whole end section was well disappointing that it was a turret section. I don't really like turret sections too often. Um, it was still a fun, they made it fun. It was basically it like a fun. Michael Bay movie, it was just explosions everywhere. Yeah. There was literally, you were just surrounded by gas tanks and helicopters flying in, the lot, mm. and it was just mayhem everywhere. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you fight the end, the end game dude? No. No, you don't. No, that's it. You <sighs> confront him, then it goes into the cutscene, and he then makes a Star Wars reference and tells you he's your father. And mm. you, when you died, you were recreated using his memories because you're, you didn't actually exist. I don't remember that bit, but I believe you. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of disappointing because the whole game made you believe that you would take down this dude. Yeah. And I, when I first played it, I thought it was like a, it was like he would stand up on a tower and you would have to run around, you know, this base and get up to him and then, you know, kill him that, that way. Maybe do, yeah. like, a uh, takedown. Yeah. And then when you're on the Blood Dragon, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a Blood Dragon versus Blood Dragon match? Yeah, that's well, what I thought would happen. Yeah, I was like, uh, if it's a turret section, okay. Considering it's uh, but, his tech, you know, like... Yeah, you're using his tech, why wouldn't he have, like, a, his own Blood Dragon? Like, this crazy... But that does explain thing. why you could ride that Blood Dragon. It wasn't just there waiting for you in his base. Mm -hmm. If you were made using his memories, it could have been running off your DNA, which was actually his. Yeah, I guess. I wasn't really thinking that deep, because this game isn't really a game that you you really want to think, you know? That is very true. They, they, I don't know, they they were just so forward with, like, everything in this fucking game. Um, don't you use, like, a D20 to, like, distract guards? Uh... Right? I don't know, I can't remember. You have a that. distraction thing. I know in Far Cry 3 it was just oh, a normal it's dice. rock. Yeah, it's a D20. Dice. Yeah, that's it. And he it. makes, like, I think the first time you use it, he makes, like, a reference. Like, he make not a reference, but he makes, like, a little joke about it. Saying, like, it's for nerds or something. Yeah. It's, it's I, like, a reference to, um... Oh, Dungeons & Dragons, I think. Yeah. Like it was a nice little, like, uh, not a nod, but a nice little thing. Little touch to, like, the, one of the big things of the 80s. Like, that's when it all mm -hmm. sort of started coming around. Yeah. Like, one of the other things which we have briefly touched on that really does irritate me um, is the heart animations. When you're taking the hearts from the enemies, it pisses me off so much because when you collect, like, five hearts, like, yeah, cool, I'm ripping out a heart. Like, yeah, manly. Yeah. But then. All you end up doing is tearing hearts out all the time. Because mm. whenever you need money, which you get most of it from killing people anyway, you have to pit, rip their hearts out to pick up anything they've got on them. And if you need money, that's what you've got to do. So doing that repeatedly over and over and over just gets so irritating. It's unbelievable. Yeah. like That's kind of like the whole game. Um, I believe I already mentioned, like, taking over bases while in concept is cool and i will say some bases were more challenging than others and some were quite fun to do as well yeah like they were fun it was cool like having that commando metal gear-esque kind of uh infiltration deal but they got old like yeah. after halfway through the game i have like five more bases to take and i'm just like I I'm, I'm done i don't want to do this anymore maybe some of them will be fun but i'm just kind of done and over with it yeah it's just no need for it no and it's cool that the game has a lot of content packed in like for a 15 dollar game or however much it was i got it on sale i got it on um, sale on steam like dixie cheap 
Yeah, so if you can catch it cheap, it's totally worth the money. But I'm not sure what the full price is now. It probably went down in price. It's prob I want to say it's like $15 now. If it's not that, then it's that's not worth it. If it's like 20 bucks, it's not worth it. Uh, it's 15 bucks. 15. Yeah, yeah, it's, then that's it's okay. 12 pounds here in English money. Is... Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I'd say, if you can pick it up for five five bucks or five pounds or whatever, like in the sale, it pretty much goes in every single sale now. Yeah. Um, so it's always worth picking up as cheap as possible, but it's definitely worth buying. It is buy. I'm not even going to joke. It is probably one of the best buys you could do. Yeah, especially if you are um, not even an '80s kid, because I'm not an '80s kid. '90s kid here. I yeah. just grew up on a lot of '80s movies, and my dad watched them. So. Yeah. If you're like me, who grew up watching 80s movies or, you know, love yeah. RoboCop. If you like, like your 80s action movies or, like, you know, your cop movies or things like that. Um, you know, if you like your 90s video games and stuff, like, you know, you'll understand, still understand some things from it. Yeah. Definitely worth picking it up. Yeah, I would, I would say that. It's definitely a suggestion, but I don't know. I... I there are certain things that do irk me, but you know what? That's also present in its base game, uh, Far Cry 3. Yeah. And at the same time, if you only played Far Cry 3 and you're like, ah, oh, Blood Dragon, I'm not sure about that. Um, if you like Far Cry 3, you'll like Blood Dragon. It is, it is a stripped-down version, but you do have certain things that you don't have to unlock, like certain skills that you get right off the get. Exactly. So, that's fun. Well, um, I think that's all that can be said, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, this if, yeah, usually... Especially for a little DLC game, like, there is only so much that we can say. Yeah, it's usually about 30 minutes we go on, but that's fine. We're nearly uh, there, so it's all good. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'll see you guys later then. Yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, and we'll see you all soon.